Well, hello there, mamas. My name is Mama Mudoni. I'm a mommy of two. I'm a four-year-old and a two-year-old. And I'm a self-election counselor and a self-election nutrition practitioner. And I make the absolute best sweet chili sauce. And you also need to try my unga. I have Lishabora and Pitobora, which are really good for small babies. Lishabora is really good for babies who are fussy eaters and who need to gain weight. Or even adults who are unwell. Like, it's a really, really nutritious uji. Anyway, today is part three. So part one, we spoke about the six years that I lost. Part two, we talked about my postpartum depression. Now let's talk about how I actually got out of it. So we got to the point where I told you in August, July 2020, I started therapy. And really what pushed me was one, wanting to leave my marriage and feeling, you know, the therapist telling me you need to leave from a point of strength. You don't leave when you're down. My daughter being super clingy and wanting her to get better and also just wanting myself to be better and just to be whole again and to be the woman or the girl that I used to be. So I started therapy. I do therapy with a lady called Grace. I'll share her number here. And Grace with time realized that I had fear of success. So remember I had said in my first video that I would start this business, it would get successful and I'd stop. I would start another one, it would get overwhelming, and the overwhelm is always the orders are too many, or my kitchen is too small, or sourcing is too much work. Like each time it got hard, and most of the times it got hard for me was success, at the brink of success, at top. So with her realizing that, I now started seeing myself sort of differently, because remember I believe, deep down, I believe I'm unworthy. But when we started the therapy sessions, actually I told her, me, I have very high self-esteem. Like, you cannot mess with my self-esteem. Kumbe, self-esteem is zero. And I'm not realizing it. So they can't work on something that I'm not realizing. So now with the realization that my self-esteem was low, and that's why I thought I was ugly, and that's why I thought I was not attractive. And that is why I did not believe I was worthy of success, or worthy of anything that is good. Then from that point, I was able to work on my self-esteem and how... I viewed myself because it doesn't matter how you view me if I do not appreciate myself and I do not believe I am worthy of good things then there's nothing much your belief and your affirmation can do for me and I also realized it was part of why my husband's affirmation would never be enough because even if he tells me this morning that oh you look nice if I don't believe I'm pretty then what he's telling me is really nonsense because I wouldn't believe it and it doesn't matter how many times I post online and people tell me, oh, you're so beautiful, oh, you're so this, you're so that, oh, you're so successful. If I don't believe it, then there's nothing that it's going to do for me, right? Wisdom for Mothers is a program that runs for 10 weeks, I think, or 12 weeks. And it works, it's a, it's a Bible study that works on you as a woman. So there's one for men as well, but of course we did the woman one. And it has three parts. So one, there is the, your relationship with God. Your relationship with three parts. Your relationship with God, your relationship with your husband, your relationship with your children, your relationship with your environment, that is your work, etc., and your relationship with yourself. That book plus therapy, like honestly, sitting down and realizing, imagine it doesn't matter what you say about me. Even if my husband today wakes up and tells me, you fat, ugly, unattractive, you stupid, you will not amount to anything. You and I say husband here because at the point at which I am in my life, or if you're married, your husband is actually the most important person. Like we don't want to believe it, but it is. Before that, it could be your father. If he tells them, he tells you that you're stupid, you're ugly, you will not amount to anything, your sister, your brother is better than you, it is you'll believe him because he is a person of authority and the person that you look up to the most. If it's your husband, he's with you every single day. And if he tells you something every single day, you'll believe it. And that's why I'm using the word husband. So, where was I? If today he wakes up and tells me that, imagine I don't care. That's what you think. Good for you. But if he told me that two years ago, I would be dead. Like, I would cry and I would, it would really affect me. And the reason it does not affect, things don't affect me anymore, is I now see that... God is the only person who has a say over my life. And that we give so many people power over our lives and they do not, 
in any way deserve it. The only person who deserves a space in your life where they have power over you is God. But now because we are human and we are stupid, the Bible says that it's not me. Uh, <laughs> that word is so easy. It's funny it kick you in my head. Is we put people in places where they don't belong. So you put your father in a space where he has authority over you and he can tell you things and when he tells you these things, you believe them and then you carry trauma for 10, 20 years of your life or 40 years of your life because he did something or he did do something or your mother, your mother told you you're not beautiful. So now you're 35 and you're still believing what your mother told you at 20. It's traumatic. But hey, I completely agree. But you can't be carrying all these things and putting your mother in a space that only God has the power. Not even your child should have the space in your life where they make you believe that you're less than by their words. And most likely this person who's making you feel less than is also fighting their own traumas from likely their parents or wherever that they picked up and they haven't dealt with and now they're throwing them to you. So wisdom for mothers made me really realize who Wangeshi is in God's eyes. And Wangeshi is beautiful. Wangeshi is hardworking. Wangeshi is a good mom. Wangeshi is an awesome businessman, businesswoman. Wangeshi is deserving of all things. I am worthy. I am like, but I don't even know how to explain. Anyway, so finding myself in that and then now going through therapy and realizing what my triggers are. And one of the triggers that I found for myself was success. So each time I'd get somewhere, I'd stop. 2019, my husband basically shoved me into the fire and made me start doing my breastfeeding course, the lactation course that I did with a college in the States. Before that, I, I was not doing much with my life. Remember, I thought I was working, and even online people thought I was working, I was selling sauce, I was doing, but really I was not selling. Like, I think, it only there's a year I sold, I think, 40 pieces of sauce. Or I made sauce in January, and by September, October, I still had it. Good thing it lasts a year, but that's not a business. It's not even a hobby. It's nonsense. So, um, 2019, um, maybe November, that's when he told me, by the way, you're spending too much time with these women online. You need to make something out of this. So he pushed me and pushed me and pushed me. I went to see Shiroshira. We spoke about it. Shiroshira runs um, Nurturing Moms, I think. But you can find her on Instagram at Shiroshira. Shiro the doula, I think. Anyway, at the, in the end, he paid for my course to do the lactation studies. And I kept wanting to quit because it was really hard. It's, it's, it's a very scientific course. And I'm an arts person. And it, I really struggled through that course. And especially in the end where there was so much about nerves, nerves and CG, IgE and hemoglobins. And it was like the science was really a lot. But I worked through that and I finished it in August. I think by that time I was already doing therapy maybe for two months. So my, my therapist really pushed me. And after that I wanted to start Mama Modoni Foods. Or rather the rebrand African Kaya and do Mama Modoni Foods. And that was really hard. And I kept wanting to quit. But now what my therapist told me was, each time you feel like quitting, what's up me? So there are days when I would have so many consultations. And here I am still trying to figure out the unga balancing and ETC. And I would want to just, like, I'm done. I'm tired. I'm done. There are too many people asking me questions. I'm getting emotionally exhausted with um, taking consultations. Um, I'm trying to now do the Unga business. I'm alone. I don't have a permit. I was, oh, I was so exhausted. I wanted to quit. So each time I don't want to quit, and what's up, Grace? I want to quit. Grace, I'm tired. Grace, I'm just, I'm over and done with it. And at this point, actually, what I did for myself is I was doing therapy twice a week. So I'll do like Monday, Thursday, or Tuesday, Friday. And it really, but then it really pushed me through 2020. I think most of 2020 did too sessions up a week. I'm going to divert here a bit and tell you about a conversation we had with my mom this past weekend. So my mom was telling me how when I was going through postpartum depression, I told her that I wanted to come and stay, I wanted to go and stay with her for a while. I don't remember why I, I never went because even my husband had called her and told her um, we, we want to engage her to come to you and she was not understanding and I told her about all these things that I was going through and she really was not getting it. So what she told me this past weekend or last week was Sometimes you tell somebody something and they don't have the capacity to help you. Or you tell someone something and they don't have the knowledge or 
even the mental know-how of how to assist you. So what my mom did at the point where I was going through therapy was she used to come here a lot, right? But that's that's where her capacity reached. And the point I'm trying to bring home here is the thing she said about capacity. So sometimes you might be in the sheet and in the pit of things and you're reaching out to somebody and you're telling them, I need help, I'm suicidal, but this person doesn't know how to help you. At the end of the day, you are responsible for your mental health. You are responsible. And because I was responsible for my mental health, at the beginning I saw I needed to see grace twice a week. And that's what I did. And that thing, by the way, it helped me start my business. In September 2020, I started the Mama Mudoni Foods. Remember I told you 20, 2018, 2019, I think even, even it started in 2014. 2014, 2015, 2016, I'm 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, I was barely earning even 30,000 in a year or 50,000 in a year. I was not earning. Quarter three of September, of 2020, from September 2020 to the end, I earned a couple of hundreds of thousands. Just because I believed in myself and just because I had gotten somebody to walk with me and to hold my hand, each time I felt like it was too much. And each time I wanted to say, I'm done. Like the ungas are stressing me, I'm done. But because I could text Grace and she talk to me on text or we'd now book an appointment immediately and I'd have an hour and just talk and she'd ask me, so now you're feeling like this. What, what do you think? Why do you feel? Why, you know, it really, it, it, it really changed my finances. So going through the, going through therapy and of course wisdom for mothers and now being able to be calmer, yeah, and being less overwhelmed because before my children's needs would really overwhelm me. And I started affirming myself that I am blessed to have children and I am, my children needing me is not a bad thing, right? And them being mommy, 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 instead of not it overwhelming me, I started looking at it differently and embracing it and trying to create time within my day to actually be with them. Before, I would never even be able to go for a walk with them by myself. But now I started being able to go for walks with them by myself. I started even being able to go to the supermarket with them by myself. Before, I'd be very scared. Last year, there's a day I, I posted and talked about the fact that it was a Sunday. That was 2021. And I was for the first time being able and willing to be left with my children alone. I would not be able to do that because I would get so scared of being overwhelmed. But now I'm able to do Sundays by myself. In fact, in October last year, my son got unwell. But before that, I planned to go on holiday with just my mom and the kids alone. I would never be able to even fathom going on holiday without a house help. I would never. But with therapy, I was able to be a better mom and be a calmer mom. And with me being calm, I only stopped being as clingy as she was to me. And with me being calmer, I was now able to actually play with them and actually be present for them without always feeling like crying and always feeling like running away. And when I say always, it was always, it was I would never be able. These days, maybe after after if I'm very busy or very tired, I, would, I can still get overwhelmed. But it's nothing like it was before. And I feel like I now have a better relationship with my children because I also believe in myself as a mom. And I believe that I'm a good mom and feeling overwhelmed or feeling tired does not make me a bad mother. And in terms of my business, I have now been able to afford myself. It would get to places where I couldn't even really afford parts. And I would have to ask, like, the money I would have is over, so now I have to ask my husband for money for pads. And that thing really used to kill my self-esteem, eh? Because pads are really cheap. Like, pads are like 200 shillings, even less. Like, with tampons and pads, 300 shillings would be enough. But now having to go to my husband to ask for money for pads, ask for money for hair, ask for money for, like... And my husband is very generous. Whether well, he has no issue with giving, but the asking and... It would really kill my self-esteem. But now last year, one of the things that really gave me an ego boost was my son at the beginning of the year, March, he was supposed to go for surgery. We didn't go for surgery. And then the doctor asked us to go for an allergy test. The allergy test costs 27,000 shillings. The consultation is 6,000. So at the end, I was paying 33,000 shillings. I did not ask my husband for a single shilling. That thing gave me such an ego boost. Like I was like, hiya, Kumbe can afford. Kumbe can buy things. Kumbe I can pay for things. Kumbe I can, as in I can actually earn my own living. 
And from then, that was not early last year, honestly, my business has really grown. It's, it's not even grown the way I would like it to grow or the, to the potential that I feel it had last year. I still feel like I had things that I didn't do. But going from a point where my mind could not even fathom, I remember there's a lady who had invited me to join a chama for 10,000 shillings a month. I couldn't. Like, how do I afford 10,000 shillings? But now, as in me, in fact, I think Nataka Chama Yamiyamili one day soon. As in my mind can actually fathom. You know this affording and there's your mind fathoming. Are you getting the difference? I could not even think about 10,000. But now if somebody tells me he's doing Chama 200,000, I likely cannot afford it now. But in my mind, I'd be like, oh, that means I'll get 2.4 million and from 2.4 million, I can do this and this with my business and oh, maybe it's something I can work towards. And actually, as in my mind, is actually now open enough to imagine that I can earn money. Does that make sense to you? It's making sense to me. I hope it's making sense to you. And then now towards the end of last year, I got Lucy. I'll share her number. Lucy is a business strategist. And at this point, I'd started earning actually more. But because I had no structures in my business, I really was not seeing where the money was going. So Lucy comes in and tells me, you know, by the way, you can afford this person and you can afford this person. And I'm like, no, me, I can't afford to hire all those people. And we sit down with Lucy and she shows me, you know, um, you can actually do it. And at this point, I'm not seeing Grace. Grace is the therapist. I'm not seeing her as much. So remember the first year, 2020, 20, I was seeing her every twice a week. Then early 2021, I started seeing her once a month. Then second half of last year, I see her. I wish I can see her like twice a month. I wish I can, but I forget. But me forgetting means also I'm in a much better place mentally. But my business has, like, my business has really, really, really grown. I now have four employees. Is it four or five? I don't even know. I have a whole media team who are behind here shooting that I'm actually affording to pay. When they first approached me, I did not even imagine I could afford to pay anything. But getting to the point where I am doing things, and the more you do something for yourself, the more you actually believe and see that you can do it. The more you're able to pay somebody 5,000 and next month you pay 5,000, the more you'll actually believe in yourself. Basically what I'm saying is show up for yourself and the more you show up, it's such an ego boost for you and you'll be able to grow your finances, your marriage, your friendship, etc. just from that. In the next episode, I'm going to be talking about how therapy improved my marriage. It's going to be a short one. It should be long like these other ones. Please support my business. I sell unga, I sell sweet chili sauce, cashew nut butter, etc. at Mama Modoni Foods. I also do consultations for breastfeeding and child nutrition. And you can find that at the Mothership Village. See you next time, guys. Bye.